My name is Lutika Merchant, I'm a visual artist and this is my video for Shifting Selves, an exhibition organized by Sarmaya in collaboration with Art. I've always been really interested in art and I've always been really creative ever since I was a little kid um, and it was always encouraged by my parents as well. Um, you know, they took me to museums, they took me to exhibitions. Um, I've always liked to draw and paint and do crafts, so really from a very, very young age. I read a lot, well, I, oh, I was read too. Um, you know, my parents used to read a lot of um, illustrated books to me, um, which is a huge reason why I think I'm so interested in storytelling and narratives. And I think I saw the power of images to be like how images were used to tell stories. Um, so definitely illustrated books. Also um, music videos, um, you know, that was one of the few channels that existed when we were kids on TV. So um, I remember watching a lot of those and definitely in the 80s and 90s music videos were super, um, well, I mean, I'm sure they exist the same way now, but I felt they were, there was a lot of concept behind them and um, there was another, it was another way to kind of tell stories in short form. You know, I've grown up in India, I then studied in the US. Um, I, then lived sort of all over Europe after that. Um, and I think because of that and traveling around so much, I have a very like interesting relationship with where I think of home is or like what I can conceive of as, some, as home or my attachments to home. And I think through this, through all of these travels and living all, in all of these different places, I've always looked almost for this sort of like mythical unanimity that sort of like, ties everyone together because in so many ways like I feel comfortable everywhere but also comfortable nowhere as cliche as that sounds and looking at especially comparative mythology and seeing that I don't know people just everywhere came up with the same stories or um, sort of feel the same way about things um, it, it makes you feel that you know we aren't all so different. And my work in general has always kind of been a response to what's going on in the world and even the, even if it's not like a it's kind of an act of self-soothing because when I'm making the work, it doesn't feel like, okay, well, this is a subject that like I'm going to now make work about. Like it's almost a way that I reconcile with what's going on around me. And then when I look back at it, it almost feels like, okay, this is a, this is sort of a means of self-soothing. But with climate change, again, it's something that our generation specifically is going to see um, the effects of like we already are it's something that's very real in our lives um, and it's something that's just been on my mind so much that um, it that's sort of how the work evolved you know because the work always evolves you know based on what I'm thinking about and how I feel. With the embroidery hoops I started using them a while ago and it was more of a means to sort of subvert what women's work is you know embroidery and cross stitching and knitting and things like that were always seen as um, women's work or like I don't know, just relegated to craft, which people didn't respect as much for, I really don't know what reason, but they didn't. Um, and sort of using embroidery hoops was a way to kind of reclaim that and use them in a more like fine art practice. And it's also like my interest in craft as a child is also how, you know, I was always, I've always been attracted to materials like that, you know, things like wool and um, embroidery hoops and stitching and things like that. So. Yeah, that's why I've used the embroidery hoops. Um, in terms of the collages and the paper cuts, um, the collages came from wanting to kind of take a break from my more sort of narrative work and work on something a bit more um, graphic, something a bit more intuitive, something where I could sort of just use up all the scraps in my studio. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of intense research behind it, but more a way to sort of like graphically represent a certain idea that I had. So that's sort of how the collages came to be. And for me, they're almost like a, a really good break when I'm feeling kind of like sort of researched out or, um, you know, I, I don't feel like making these narrative works or telling these really like intricate stories. It's a really good way to sort of work something out in just a different way. Just I feel like it just uses a different part of my brain. Um, the paper cuts came to be because I was stuck in Bombay during the pandemic and um, I was sent all of this beautiful handmade paper by a friend, Mia, who um, she's actually the director of Eleven Eleven, which is a clothing brand. And they had all of this like organic, beautiful cotton rag paper that they had made using all of the off cuts of the clothing that they make. And a while ago, she texted me and she was like, hey, I have all of this paper. You love working with paper. Can I send you some? And I was like, yeah, sure. And so she did. And then when I was at home, like locked down during the pandemic at the beginning of 2020, um, I had all of this paper at my parents' house and 
all the art supply stores were closed and I was running low on materials and I just started sort of um, working with it. And because it's so porous, I couldn't really use it to paint with um, and use watercolors. And I've always loved the Hans Christian Andersen um, paper cut. So kind of very much inspired by those paper cuts. And also again, using craft as another way of storytelling, um, I decided to use, um, I decided to use this paper to make these paper cuts. And yeah, it was like, it's, it's another, it's always interesting for me to kind of expand my practice also, um, diff finding different ways to tell stories um, and also using paper in as many different ways as I can. I use the eye a lot because for me, it's, it's a very potent symbol, you know, it can be like the eye in the sky or like an eye of this sort of supreme being looking down on you or, you know, again, in a very cliched way, eyes are the windows to the soul. It's like the first thing you look at when you look at someone, you know, eye contact means everything when you meet someone. Um, and it's also a symbol that like has been used in myth in so many way different ways. Like if you look at the Ankh or if you look at, I don't know, many different like mythological paintings or stories, like there is always, I think culturally, we are very attracted to the eye. And so... Um, that's why I use it, you know, I feel like it ties us also to our own past. I've always wanted my figures to be sort of free of gender, free of ethnicity. I, do, I wouldn't want anyone to look at it and feel, think, oh my god, that's me, because those figures are supposed to actually represent everyone. And I, you know, because I work with myth and because I'm so interested in how we are all kind of the same, these figures are not supposed to really represent like one race or one type of person in specific, but it's more supposed to represent everyone. And I think also turning them into animals or like them having animal heads again links us back to like our collective past because again, if you look at like the way the Egyptians represented people or if you look at, I don't know, the Greeks, you know, there's so many animal-human hybrids. So it's sort of a nod to that as well as sort of taking any sort of defining characteristic out of the figures as well just so we can all relate to them in some way for me like it's probably one of like the most like meaningful pieces in 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 that series just because it really illustrates this idea that i was trying to kind of focus on through the whole body of work um it's sort of the idea of us being really at this point where you can see these two different realities like we're really at that cusp of things could go one way or things could go another way and this painting sort of represents that you know you're looking at this like beautiful reality where you know if we do all the right things we'll end up maybe in this sort of world that's a paradise but we could so very easily just go the complete other way and end up literally kind of falling over um this cliff into nothingness you know and there's a tiny you know one of the figures is a small little boatman and he's on the edge of a waterfall um and the boat has no oars because i wanted I wanted us to, because that's kind of where we are at, I think, you know, like we are kind of careening down this river and we're about to go over this waterfall and we've definitely lost our oars because I think collectively we've made really bad choices. Um, but maybe we can kind of be ingenious and find some way to sort of like reverse what's, what the damage that we've caused. So he's sort of almost at the edge of this thing and he, of this waterfall and he's going to almost go over, but he's not gone over yet. And that's really where I think that we are, um, in the world right now, you know, we're really at that precipice. I was um, really um, interested with, uh, when, you know, when Samaya first came and presented the show because uh, the connections were just spot on. The reason why Bone Dart in particular is so interesting to me is because each artist has its own, their own signature. That's um, a pattern that they make. So ostensibly you can look at any painting and if you know what the artist's signature is, what texture they use, you would know who made that art. Um, and I just thought that was just really beautiful, you know, that the artist sort of marks, um, like mark making is a link to like the identity of the artist. Um, and just the way they tell stories and these like lovely desaturated colors that they use and the textures, um, just beautiful. And so it's a, it's a huge inspiration, especially for my early work. And even now, I mean, it's something I definitely always take with me. Um, and then through the Acharya's work, I mean, it's so funny because Pavitra, who's the brand custodian, custodian at um, Sarmaya, actually introduced me to her work when I was a teenager. Um, as a little side note, I worked as an intern for Pavitra when I was like 14 or 15. I was really young um, and I worked with her one summer and she was the one who introduced me to Dhruvi Acharya's work like 20 years ago. So it feels very full circle that like that 
was one of the works sort of that you know were put side by side with mine it just it, it was a very full circle moment um but yeah i think the connections um that have been made in this show feel very like authentic and very spot on and make a lot of sense for me at least in relation to my own 